Welcome to TJ Cross Engineers Incorporated Process Safety Management Basics Series. This series is a supplement to our Oil Field Basics Training Series, which is also available on YouTube. Today we will be discussing the principles of process hazard analysis evaluation and control philosophy development. A process hazard analysis or PHA is a formal systematic process to evaluate a design, identify hazards, and design safeguards. We will discuss the principles of a PHA, the history, the types of reviews, getting critical party input, and the desired outcome of this process. First, let's discuss the principles of a PHA. A PHA is a systematic, comprehensive review of a process to identify hazards, analyze the significance of the hazards, assess the adequacy of the safeguards, and mitigate them where justified. A PHA is not a method to review the quality or operation of the design. This step needs to take place prior to your PHA meeting so that everyone has already agreed to the design functionality. In 1984, a toxic gas cloud was released at a Union Carbide pesticide plant in India, which killed more than 2,500 people and hospitalized more than 125,000. The Bhopal, India incident was the worst industrial accident in history. As a result, the American Society of Chemical Engineers helped develop OSHA 1910.119. This is known as process safety management. OSHA adopted process safety management in 1992 for any processes which could catastrophically release toxic, reactive, flammable, or explosive chemicals or stores of more than 10,000 pounds of flammable liquids. However, most of our clients have adopted them as a standard review for new designs or design modifications. Here are a few acronyms for the fundamental elements of process safety management for emergency shutdown, safety and alarm systems, process controls, and logic and procedures. Why do process accidents happen? If we review history, the reasons break down into equipment failure, incorrect operating procedures, unforeseen operating conditions, breakdown of hazard controls, and sometimes even Mother Nature. Some events propagate accidents into catastrophic situations such as design errors, incorrect situation diagnosis, operating or maintenance errors, alarm failures, shutdown system failures, ignition sources, management system failures, and site-specific conditions. We can design engineered systems that can mitigate accidents, such as alarms, safety shutdown systems, control system response, operator response, relief valves slash flare systems, secondary containment, emergency response, contingency planning slash drills, fire protection systems, and site-specific conditions. How can we reduce the likelihood of an accident? Safe designs, preventative maintenance, testing, inspections, procedures and training will reduce the initiating event from occurring. The objective of a PHA is to prevent incidents by identifying risk, analyzing the significance of that hazard, improving operations, and meeting legal and company requirements. When is a process hazard analysis needed? It's needed for a new plant or project, for changes to an existing process, on existing facilities every five years to assess process hazards and changes to the facility operations per OSHA 1910.119. A proper PHA evaluation will collectively focus the design, operating, and safety teams to review hazards, incorporate input and perspective, and develop stronger safeguards and procedures to prevent accidents. Two qualitative risk analysis methods are used by most of our clients, HAZOP 
or what if. A HAZOP is a more comprehensive review of a complex PNID system, which is easy to organize and document. The what if technique is preferred for simpler or more focused systems. The team should include critical designers, operations, maintenance, process and controls engineering, and HES representatives. Critical designers may include equipment vendors, inspectors, fire protection and metallurgy specialists. A skilled PHA facilitator should be experienced in process safety management and operations and have the required analytical skills to help the team identify hazards, understand risks, and rank hazards. The scribe must be able to capture the team input. We will cover the eight steps for analyzing each node of the design. You should become familiar with this HAZOP terminology to help you during a process hazard analysis. When performing a HAZOP or any hazards analysis, it is essential that all important causes be identified. The consequences of each cause be globally developed with no consideration of safeguards. The safeguards be claimed only if they are documented and proven, and a consistent risk ranking process must be used. The PHA starts by selecting a section or node to review. We highlight each node on the PNID. For each node, we proceed through the start of the process and then clearly discuss and understand the function or the design. Spend enough time to thoroughly discuss the design, reasons for the design, and the PHA objectives. This is not an opportunity to change the design. In Step 2, the team documents the node description and design intent by referring to the control philosophy. In Step 3, we then discuss process deviations to the design. We will add various core deviations to each node, including changes in flow, temperature, pressure, level, leaks, concentrations, among other issues. Each deviation will be reviewed by the team. We will discuss the consequence of each deviation without any design safeguards. Then we will discuss the protection included in the current design. In Step 4, we will brainstorm possible causes within the node which could cause the deviation. Don't analyze or criticize these causes, we just need to capture them. The scribe records the causes. Step 5 is to confirm that the cause is valid. If it is, then analyze it otherwise remove it. When we discuss consequences, assume that we are operating without safeguards. We should assume that the operator is not paying attention. The control valve is in manual position. Alarms and safe interlocks are not operating and no one is following procedures. It is vital to develop and document consequences fully and chronologically. We must look at reasonable, worst-case scenarios. During this process, the scribe records the consequences. In Step 7, we need to add safeguards that are included on the PNID and control philosophy. We first evaluate global safeguards and challenge their effectiveness. Then we visualize the accident sequence. We consider the time effects and possible impact of stress and urgency on reaction time. Safeguards are then listed in priority. First, we list items that eliminate causes. Next, we list items that mitigate the consequence. And lastly, we document human intervention such as emergency response. If we review the layers of protection, the first layer is process design which is the most reliable. As we work outward from the center, we add alarms, safety instrumented systems, reliefs, emergency systems, and lastly, emergency response. Each of these is an additional layer of protection which can collectively, 
prevent accidents. Safeguards include instrumented protection, such as control loops and alarms, non-instrumented operator surveillance and mechanical design features, and others such as training and preventative maintenance. Next, we work on ranking the cause, likelihood, and risk. In Step 8, we risk rank the cause and consequence scenario. First, we assign a numerical level of the severity without safeguards. Then we assign a numerical likelihood of the occurrence with safeguards. Then we assign a numerical risk rank from the PHA chart. Clients will provide a PHA chart which helps us assign these numerical rankings. We rank the likelihood of the consequence based on these descriptions. Is the likelihood frequent, occasional, possible, unlikely, or improbable? After we have assigned severity and likelihood, a high, medium, or low risk ranking is assigned based on the client-provided risk matrix. This chart is an example of a risk matrix that assigns a risk based on the likelihood and consequence impact. Each client must determine the level of action required for each level of risk. After we have assessed these events, we will propose recommendations for the highest risk scenarios. We will give priority to ideas that prevent the cause from occurring. If the cause cannot be prevented, we will suggest ideas that mitigate the consequences. The team should not try to design fixes at this point. The scribe records the recommendations and the assigned responsible parties. It is important to assign responsible parties before the end of the PHA. After the PHA, the design team will prepare a report of recommendations and present it to the PHA team. The team will either agree to those recommendations or additional work will be developed to mitigate hazards. A control philosophy narrates the PNID to describe how each piece of equipment is controlled and operated. The programmer uses the control philosophy to program the PLC. A control philosophy describes the project, process, and interactive control of the system. It also describes the safety systems, alarms, and shutdowns. The first section of the control philosophy describes the overall process in words. The control philosophy also includes shutdown and alarm set points, function and PLC type. It includes control loop tables that describe each loop, function, loop variable, and parameters. A safety integrity level, or SIL, describes the various safety protective layers to prevent accidents. A SIL 1 layer protects the incident between 1 in 10 and 1 in 100 from failing. A SIL 4 layer protects the incident between 1 in 10,000 and 1 in 100,000 from occurring. This concludes our training module on process hazard analysis and control philosophy. If you have any questions, please contact our process and controls group for more information.